I went through a total of 17 lists on various websites and blogs that ranked the best fantasy series of all time. I then combined all of these lists to make the ultimate top 20 fantasy series list of all time. Now, I've done this idea before, but using lists from booktubers, and I did receive a lot of comments where people complained that there was a significant recency bias in that list, which was true. That is why I created this video to see if various websites agree or disagree with booktubers. And no, you don't have to watch the first video to watch this one but i basically went through 17 lists that ranked the best fantasy series of all time and if a list gave a book a 10th ranking then i would give it one point and if a book was ranked number one then i would give it 10 points and in the case if the list didn't rank the books then i just gave all the books mentioned five points i then combined all the points and a total of 92 fantasy series were mentioned meaning i now have the ultimate top 20 fantasy series list of all time but firstly let's start with some surprises both red wall the dresden files the witcher or any books by david gemmel or re salvatore were not able to break into the top 20 which i thought was quite surprising also raymond e Feiss was not able to break into the top 20 as well which i didn't see coming but if you want to access the full list then i'll leave it on my patreon but without further ado let's get into the top 20 best fantasy series of all time on spot number 20 with 11 points we have have the five book series by Brent Weeks called The Lightbringer. Now this is interesting because I know that this is a very popular series that is especially praised for its imaginative magic system. However, it seems like a lot of readers did not enjoy book four and five and it's almost become a thing where people don't even want to recommend the series because of the last two books. Now maybe this is just a booktube thing but otherwise I have heard a lot of great things about this series but I must admit I haven't read anything by Brent Weeks yet. On spot number 19 with 12 points we have two series. Firstly, we have one of the giants of the 70s and 80s and a series which has published more than 25 novels and that is the Shannara series by Terry Brooks, an icon of the genre for sure. Now I actually haven't read any of the books in Shannara and it's definitely one of those series that barely any booktubers talk about at all which I find a bit strange considering how famous this series is. Now I heard that the early books are very much classic fantasy which is not that popular on booktube at the moment so that might be the reason for it. However, if you read the series, definitely let me know if it's worth checking out. Also on spot number 19, we have the popular Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Now, the Broken Earth was a priority series for me to read and finish in 2022, but after reading the first book, the fifth season, I decided that this series was not for me. However, the fifth season has some of the most imaginative writing I have ever come across in the genre, and Jemisin massively handles the themes of climate change and abuse and motherhood, and I can definitely definitely don't understand why this series won three Nebula Awards. The problem I had is that I just didn't relate to the characters, but it's still a series I would definitely recommend giving a try, because as I said, I think this is more a me issue here. Another thing I also loved about the Broken Earth trilogy was some of the quotes in this novel, such as, home is what you take with you, not what you leave behind, and for all those that have to fight for the respect that everyone else is given without question. And speaking of quotes, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Commonplace, that is looking to revolutionize how we annotate our favorite quotes. The Commonplace app is one of my new favorite reading apps that allow me to quickly save and share my favorite quotes and annotations. Now you can post your quotes to digital book clubs as well with the page hashtag and dynamics tags to let your friends know what you're reading. Now by saving reading passages on the Commonplace app, I've created a digital library of some of the books I've read already years and it allows me to never forget a book that I read and loved. Now struggling to remember what you read is a part of the past with this app. I've also been checking out the Discover tab to find out what other readers thoughts are on books and being able to find discussions on questions has been super helpful and also thought provoking and I really enjoy to see what other readers are discovering in their books. Now I've started a Library Viking book club. You can check it out to find out my reading notes and we can start reading together. Now if you think this app sounds interesting make sure to check out the link in the description down below and a special thanks to commonplace for sponsoring today's video i really appreciate it all right let's get back to the video on spot number 18 with 13 points we have two series firstly one of my all-time favorite series the realm of the elderlings by robin hobb now i've only read six of the 17 books set in this universe but what i've read has been incredible many people call robin hobb the queen of fantasy and for good reason 
Pop's ability to write character is some of the very best I have ever come across in fantasy, period. Yes, Hobbs' books are slow paced, but they are so beautifully written and her books really pull at your heartstrings. Now, I will be continuing this series this year with the tournament trilogy and I just can't wait. The other series on the 18th spot is the iconic Dragon Rider fantasy series, The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey. Now, this is also a classic in the genre and also one I want to give a read this year. Now, I just want to give the first book a read, at least initially, because I believe there are more than 25 books set in this universe, which is just mad. But this is one of the most iconic depictions of dragons in fantasy, and I'm a huge fan of dragons, and this series has also inspired countless of authors, so I really don't have an excuse for not giving this a read. Now, moving on to spot number 17, with a total of 14 points, we have one of the, my most anticipated reads of the year, and it's a relatively new series, which is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. Now, this series is taking the fantasy community by storm, and almost everyone seems to absolutely adore it. Now, The Dandelion Dynasty is an American-inspired fantasy story that is praised for its incredible world-building and characters, and while I've heard amazing things about the series, I actually don't know that much about it, and I want to keep it that way. I want to go as blind as possible into this world. However, I did chat with Ken Liu for my Patreon interview a couple of months ago, and I was absolutely amazed by how much thought he has put into the world building, so I'm really excited to give the series a read. On spot number 16, with a total of 15 points, we have two series. Firstly, we have the iconic Grim Talk series, The Chronicles of Black Company by Clem Cook. Now, this is also a series that is incredibly iconic, but also a series I don't know that much about. I know Jimmy from the Fancy Network really enjoyed the first book in the series. And speaking of Black Company, the other series on spot number 16 is a series where the author got a huge inspiration from The Chronicles of Black Company, which is... Malison Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. Now, Malison is praised for its absolutely insane world building set in a world that literally has hundreds of thousands of years of history. Now, I did try this series last year and I was absolutely overwhelmed by the complexity and scale of the story. It is like nothing I have ever read before and while this series didn't work for me personally, I can definitely say that Ericsson is one of the most ambitious authors of our day. Now, I made two videos discussing my experience with this series if you're interested. Now, on spot number 15, with a total of 20 points, we have The Earth Sea Cycle by Ursula Le Guin. Now, Le Guin is without a doubt one of the most influential fantasy and sci-fi authors of the past century, and her depictions of dragons is one of the most iconic there is. Now, I gave the first book in The Earth Sea Cycle a read last year, and while I appreciate appreciate and understand the influence this series has had on the genre, I really didn't vibe with Quinn's prose. Maybe I'm just not smart enough. But it is a series I do want to give another try because as stated, I love dragons and people keep telling me that dra the dragons in Earthsea are some of the best out there. On spot number 14 with a total of 21 points, and I'm so excited about this one, is The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. Yes, I know I've only read the first book in the series, and yes, I know that this series is unfinished, but Lies of Loch Lamora was my favorite read of 2022, and it's one of the greatest books I have ever read. The prose, the atmosphere, the dialogue, the characters, the pacing, I mean, I loved everything about Loch Lamora, and I will definitely be continuing this series this year. It is quite incredible that this series is ranked this high, considering it hasn't had a release in 10 years, and it's also unfinished, but this just goes to show how much people love this series. On spot number 13, with a total of 22 points, is a big surprise, which is Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan, one of the most popular middle grade fantasy series ever to be written. Now, this series wasn't popular in the Faroe Islands where I'm from, so the hype surrounding this series never really came to my country. But now that I'm living in the UK, it feels like I missed out because there are so many people that grew up reading this series. Now, the fact that this series is ranked this high just, just goes to show how far nostalgia can take you. On spot number 12, with a total of 23 points, we have one of the most popular Grimdark series ever, 
the first law by Joe Abercrombie. Now the first law is an excellent example on a modern fantasy where there is very little exposition and a lot of dialogue but it just works. Now Abercrombie is known for being one of the best authors in the game when it comes to writing characters and dialogue and while most of the characters in this series are horrible human beings, you end up rooting for them which is pretty mad. Now I read 8 of the 10 books set in this universe and I'm planning on reading the last two this year so yes, I am definitely a big fan. Please pick this up if you enjoy grimdark fantasy. On spot number 11 with a total of 29 points we have another unfinished series which is The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, a series I haven't started since it seems unlikely that we will ever get book 3. But this series has a huge fan base and the first book in this trilogy, The Name of the Wind, is loved by almost everyone who picks it up. While I haven't read it yet, I will definitely get to it someday, I'm just not in a hurry since Rothfuss isn't in a hurry. Moving on, we are now getting to spot number 10 and it's getting really interesting. At number 10 with a total of 30 points we have one of my all time favorite series and one of the most influential series that got me back into fantasy which is The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Now this series opened my eyes for what fantasy can be. This series is absolutely insane and blends different genres together and becomes really meta in book 5, 6 and 7. Now I really think that The Dark Tower is one of the greatest series I have ever read. It is so imaginative, creative and it's not like nothing you will ever read. So if you want a meta western fantasy that gets really weird, pick up The Dark Tower, you won't regret it. On spot number 9, with a total of 32 points, we have another series which was also huge and influential in getting me addicted to fantasy, and that is the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Now it's been three years since I read the original trilogy and I read a lot of fantasy since so I'm not sure if I would love this series as much on a reread but this series just blew my mind and was my first introduction to a very hard magic system which I just found so fascinating. I was absolutely mesmerized by the atmosphere, the world building and the characters in this trilogy and I love how cin cinematic it felt reading this series. Now to this day I still recommend Mistborn as one of the go-to series for readers who want to get into fantasy. It is accessible and can be enjoyed by both young and old readers. On spot number 8, with a total of 34 points, we have a modern classic and a series I read as a young teenager and loved, which is Historic Materials by Philip Pullman. Now this series is criminally underrated in the booktube community if I'm being honest and it's definitely a series I would love to reread one day considering it's been more than a decade since I read it. However, still to this day I think that this series has some of the best animal companions I have ever come across in fantasy, period. I just loved how magical and fun it was reading the, these books. So if you're a teenager or if you have young kids, then this is a series that is great to check out. And even if you're an adult, I still believe you will enjoy this one. On spot number 7, with a total of 36 points, we have arguably the most iconic children's fantasy series ever to be written. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. At the point of recording this video, I'm actually working on a video on how Narnia went from being loved by everyone to almost disappearing from everyone's minds, so please check it out afterwards. Narnia is a Christian fantasy, meaning almost everything in this series symbolizes Christian truths. And if you are a Christian, which I am, then you will be able to catch a lot of those details. Now I would still argue that non-Christians can enjoy the series. It is whimsical, it's fun, and it's just a really great adventure. I mean, there's just nothing like the world of Narnia, and if I had to choose one fantasy world to live in, then I would choose Narnia because almost everyone in this world is so nice. On spot number 6, with a total of 40 points, we have the most popular absurdist fantasy series ever to be written, Discworld by Sir Terry Pratchett. Now, this massive 40 plus book series is known for being absolutely absurd, yet analyzing very deep and thought provoking themes. Now, I've only read two of Discworld books but I was truly astounded by Pratchett's ability to analyze the themes of religion, death and morality in such an absurd setting. <laughs> now these books are absolutely iconic and are great palate cleansers, so if you want something more lighthearted, fun and weird, then try out this massive series. We've arrived at top 5. At spot number 5 with a total of 49 points is one, 
if not the most iconic fantasy series of the decade, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Now this was probably the first fantasy series I ever read, and if you are from my generation and you are a bookworm, then you will remember how iconic this time was when these books came out. Now I don't think we will ever see such hype for a new release again as the hype generated from the Harry Potter series. However, I've only read this series once, more than a decade ago, so I'm not sure if it stands the test of time, but nonetheless, it's incredibly iconic. On spot number 4, with a total of 50 points, we have one of the most popular ongoing series, The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Now this series has taken the fantasy community by storm, and almost everyone seems to love it, and for good reason. I read book 2 last year, and it ended up becoming my second favorite read of 2022. Stormlight Archive is such an epic tale, but also has an accessible writing style, which is definitely one of the reasons why people love it so much. The amount of incredible character moments in the first two books in the series is just simply astounding. I definitely understand the love for the series, and I'm really excited to read Oathbringer later this year. On spot number 3, with a total of 78 points, we have one of my all-time favorite series, The Massive Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Now this was also one of the first series I picked up when I was getting back into fantasy and I just loved it. Yes, there are so many issues with the series but I don't care. The character dynamics is some of the best I've ever come across in fantasy. The world building is S tier and the whole journey you go through is just incredible. I mean these characters you are introduced to in this world will stay with you forever because they are just so well realized and finishing the series is one of the most satisfying yet sad experiences you can have. So I'm definitely very happy to see the Wheel of Time break into top 3. On spot number 2, with a total of 82 points, we have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, arguably the most popular adult fantasy of the last decade. I've only read the first two books in the series, and that was before I started reading properly, so I definitely need to pick it up again, but it's no surprise that this series is here. It has received now two successful adaptations, the books are fantastic, and Martin's ability to write dialogue is astounding. Now, I feel like everyone knows about this series, so let's just move on to spot number one. At spot number one, with a staggering 103 points, we have The Middle Earth Universe by J.R.R. Tolkien, obviously. It is no surprise to see this series as number one. It is probably the most influential series to be ever written and has literally shaped fantasy as we know it today. Thoroughly well deserved ranking in my opinion and this series has stood the test of time which is great to see. So that is it. Did you spot any surprises on this list? Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support what I do here, please check out my Patreon. And speaking of Patreons, a special thanks to my Patreons for support what I do here. I really appreciate it. <laughs>